Hi, I'm David Brancaccio. Normally, I'm the host of American Public Media's Marketplace Morning Report, but right now, I'm here in my capacity as moderator of a Scientific American Bio Super Session. It's going to be here in San Diego, and I'm joined by Mike May, who's the editorial director of Scientific American's Worldview Issue. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Give me a sense of this magazine. We're going to talk about some of the narrative content in a second, some of the actual articles, but I suspect that what people are going to do is flip into the magazine a little bit, where you see a lot of interesting charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's always been the heart of Scientific American Worldview is the so-called innovation scorecard. And lots of information, lots of data. There actually is sort of a, an overall ranking of countries in terms of their potential to be innovative in biotech, and that's the center of this. Potential to be innovative, specifically in biotech. So. Give me a sense of the criteria. Well, specifically in biotech is as best we can do. Innovation uh, covers a lot of ground, and, and some things that make you innovative in one place would make you innovative in another. So if you have a lot of PhDs in uh, science areas, life sciences, that helps for biotech. If you have a lot of money that is available to invest in science, that helps in biotech and other areas as well. But there's a lot of, a lot of different parts that are involved in this. It's pretty complicated. It's R&D investment. You have mm -hmm. an interesting uh, category. I don't even know if you can explain it. Intensity? Right. Well, intensity, we think of that as a country's efforts toward biotechnology. It's how hard they're trying, how much money they're putting in, how, how the government's supporting it, this sort of thing. But again, all of these categories are made of subcategories so that we're, we're covering a lot of ground. You can get the issue to find out who's doing well, mm -hmm. but give me just what, what comes to mind if you're looking at sort of that top five. Mm -hmm. uh, what's one of the headlines there? One of the headlines is Scandinavia. Scandinavia over the past several years has done well, several countries in Scandinavia. Essentially all of Scandinavia does pretty decent. And then a few countries are typically at the top five, top five more or less overall and continue to be. It's interesting, I mean, what do you think historically might explain some of that achievement from Scandinavia? I know I've done some reporting in, for instance, mm -hmm. Denmark, mm -hmm. and their agriculture industry was mm -hmm. always pretty innovative. They even mm -hmm. had brewing for yeah. beer, hmm. and that helped give them some of the expertise that over the decades fed into their role they now play in biotech. We actually had somebody write an article about why. Why is Scandinavia doing so well? And we talked to a variety of people, and it sounded like some of the reasons are focus on education, and some people even said focus on being successful. You know, sort of a mentality. And I think a lot of times people think of biotech as a totally a tools business. And it is a tools business. It's a tools business and a business that needs investment, but it needs people. It needs the right kind of people with the right kind of attitude. And I'm kind of getting the feeling that that's what's going on there, at least in part. I gotta ask you something though, Mike. You know, this is a ranking, and you can mm. look up and find the country that you're most interested in or the countries and look at the score. Sure. There are high and there are lower scores. If you're a lower scoring country in this survey, does that mean you can't play a role in this area? I think completely not the case. Yeah. You know, you, you could, for one thing anyway, look at the innovation scorecard as a recipe of what to do for your biotech innovation industry. That would be one way to look at it that could help you rise up the scorecard. But another thing to think of that you're sort of leaning towards here is other things you can do. You don't have to be an innovator in biotech to be successful in biotech, to play in biotech. Um, you know, one example we'd had from a couple years ago was Sudan was sort of making themselves a go-to place for GMO crop trials. And you know, they're like specializing, they're making a niche market for themselves, and somebody could certainly do that. And we've seen countries, say a country has a lot of uh, natural resources, or a lot of biodiversity, that's sort of an automatic thing that you have that's different than everybody else that you could take advantage of. And what's interesting is every single country in this survey, I've looked, mm -hmm. has some deficits, places where they could do better. And this is yeah. a guide to policy if people want to take it that way. A absolutely. You know, the United States has been at the top every year, but the United States doesn't win every category. There are categories where the United States does not do particularly well. But that's part of the strength of the scorecard. It looks broadly, and it reminds all of us that biotech takes a lot of pieces. There are a lot of moving parts and you need to try to balance and do well in a lot of areas. What you have here is a magazine, mm -hmm. not just the scorecard. Mm -hmm. Some interesting pieces in there, I think, that fall into the category of trying to think more creatively about the value that innovation mm -hmm. can actually bring. Mm -hmm. It's a subtle subject. Mm -hmm. It is a subtle subject, and one not mentioned that often. If you go on the street and ask about biotech or pharma, you're going to hear about what it costs to do it. We hear about the the input. And by the way, it costs a lot. It costs it's an expensive lot. thing. It's innovation. expensive. It's very expensive. But then you have to ask yourself, what is the value? 
And so we tried to find a way to look into that. And it's not simple because the main thing I think we found out, David, is that if you look at value in different parts of the world, biotech value, there are different things that they like, there are different things that they want or they value. So there's actually a real cultural aspect to what's valuable. You, so, want, you might want the jobs, for instance. You might sure. want to attract talent. You mm -hmm. also might want to lift people up who are suffering from disease or famine. Absolutely, and, and any one of those things are, are great objectives to have. It just sort of depends on what a country needs. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. So you've done this for a number of years, uh, work mm -hmm. on the worldview issue. Right. You do see changes over time. Yeah, absolutely, and I think one of the strengths right now is this is our sixth year. We're just getting far enough along in some ways to start looking at that over time and saying, what are the trends? And I, I, with all these kinds of data, you have to keep looking. Uh, I'd like to come back and talk to you here in four or five more years when we have a decade of doing this and see what we know. And one of the things we know now is the data jumps around. I mean, there's a fair amount of volatility. You have a certain group of players who often end up at the top, but how close to the top they are jumps around a lot. We have an interesting graph in this issue this year that shows that. Well, Mike May, Editorial Director of Scientific American's Worldview, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. And I'm David Brancaccio, thanks for watching.